Hello Oracle Database Geeks, this is Justin and in this Oracle Database video YouTube tutorial I am going to show you what happens when a transaction is currently in progress and an Oracle Database crashes. Okay. Now, what is a transaction? Well, a transaction is something that manipulates the data in an Oracle Database. Okay. Now, there is a, lang a common industry standard language which is used to communicate with an Oracle Database, including manipulate an Oracle Database. That language is known as SQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Now, SQL is a standard not just in an Oracle database, but in other RDBMS products as well. Okay, so with Microsoft SQL uses SQL, IBM's DB2 uses SQL, um, Sybase uses SQL, um, the open source uh, MySQL RDBMS uses SQL. Okay, so SQL is an industry standard. Now, in regards to transactions, there are three classifications of commands okay, in SQL. Okay? So there's three categories of SQL commands um, in regards to transactions. DML statements, DDL statements, and DCL statements. A DML statement is, stands for Data Manipulation Language. Okay? And it's just as you would think. It's a command that manipulates okay, um, that manipulates the data in a database. For instance, the insert command is a data manipulation command. Um, the next classification of, com of commands in regards to transactions are DDL statements. DDL stands for data definition language, and that's, a, a, that's an SQL command which changes the structure of an Oracle database, i.e., when you create a table with the create table command, that's a DDL statement. The third classification of SQL commands in regards to transactions are DCL commands and DCL stands for data control language and these are commands which uh, manipulate the permissions of data in an Oracle database so for instance um, a grant or revoke commands are are considered um, DCL statements um, now this video is not a full treatment of transactions Oracle transaction concepts okay um, I just wanted to give you a quick overview. Uh, please see my YouTube Oracle videos on transactions to get more information on that. So in this particular video, I'm going to show you what happens when, you, when you're in the middle of a transaction and the database crashes. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our Oracle SID to finance. Let's query our Oracle SID variable. And let's connect to our finance database with our SQL Plus program. We type in the show user to ensure we're connected as a SysDBA user, which we are. And we say select ask select name from the dollar sign database. And this ensures that we're connected to the correct database, finance. Now, I'm going to create a table called names. Create table names F name var car 20. Okay, and what, I, what I'm saying here is create a table called names, this is a data definition language by the way, called names with one column, F name, and this column is going to have a data type of var car 20. Okay, now I'm going to describe the structure of the names table with the describe command. Okay, and here it is, F name column, data type var car 2. Now I'm going to do a select asterisk from names, and it's going to say that there are no roles select it okay and um, there are no roles in this table because we didn't insert any okay so I'm going to insert two roles into this table the first one I'm going to insert is insert into names values my girlfriend's name Minka one row created insert into names values John one role created. Now I do select asterisk from names. Okay? And I see these two roles are now in there. These two rows, I should say, are now in this table. Minka and John. Now I'm going to type in roll back. Okay? Now I type in select asterisk from names and I see that this data is not there anymore. Okay? So so, that, so these rows are not there anymore, okay, because I did a rollback over here. All right, so a transaction begins when you type in an insert, when you type in a command such as insert. This is where the transaction begins. 
The transaction will be active until you either end it with a rollback command or a commit command. Okay, and there's some other and there's other instances that will um, end a transaction as well. But these are the two we're going to talk about here. All right. Um, the rollback command basically says. Any DML statement that was issued during the transaction, that is, any DML statement that was issued between, um, starting at the insert statement until now, go ahead and roll back. Okay? And it did. It basically took the data that's in what's called undo segments, which we'll talk about in undo videos, and it, and it um, restored that table, the affected table, to what it looked like prior to the transaction. Okay? So that's why the, the so that's why um, those uh, rows are currently gone. All right, type in ast select asterisk for names again. Those rows are still there's still there's still no rows in this table. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert my data back into the table, but this time typing commit. There's my data. Now I type in rollback, and my data is still there even though I typed in rollback. Okay, because I typed in the commit command right here. So, and what does the commit command do is the commit command flushes the change vectors, we call them, the the, uh, the redo data, okay, the changes from the from the uh, redo log buffer, which is an SGA memory, and flushes it to the online redo log files on disk. Okay, so the commit command takes the changes that are currently in the redo log buffers, which is located in the SGA portion of memory, RAM, and flushes it to the online uh, redo log files on disk. Okay, so you have two ways to end a transaction. You can either roll it back with a rollback command, which which looks in the undo segment and redoes the data the way it was prior to the transaction, or you could type in commit, which takes the changed, which takes um your change that's currently in the uh, redo log buffer and flushes it to online redo log files, making it permanent. By the way, so I can even I can even shut down my Oracle database. And then start it back up, and these two these two rows uh, rows will st will still be in the tape the names table because um, I committed them. Okay, so when you commit, they're they're basically permanent. Okay, so shut down is complete. Now I'm gonna type in startup. Okay, database open. Now when I type in select asterisk from name, I will I will see that the, 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 the that this data is still in the table because uh, even though I shut down and restarted the database, that doesn't matter because I typed in the commit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'll show you we're gonna do another experiment. I'm gonna insert two more names, Bob and Bill. But I'm not gonna type in commit. Okay? So the transaction, remember, transaction begins when you start to manipulate data. So when I typed in the insert command, the transaction is currently active. Okay? So I didn't type in commit or rollback, so I did not uh, end the transaction. It's currently still in progress. So when I type in select asterisk from names, I see Bob and Bill are in there, the two, the two rows I just inserted, Bob and Bill. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to shut down the database gracefully, but shut down immediate. And I'm not going to type in commit or rollback. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Task Manager, okay, operating Windows operating system program, and I'm going to find the Oracle process. There it is, Oracle.exe. Now, the Oracle database in Windows runs as one process, Oracle.executable, but it has many threads. You can see threads. There's 29 of them here running underneath of it, okay. So Oracle RDBMS kernel executable. So there are multiple threads running in this multi-threaded process, oracle.exe. Okay, so that's how the Oracle database kernel runs in Windows. Um, on Unix or Linux systems, you type in ps minus ef to see running processes, as opposed to going to Task Manager on this platform. And you uh, would kill minus 9 the smon process, for instance, or the pmon process. Okay, but in a Windows environment, there are threads. So we right-click the oracle.exe um, process, we and we select end process. We say end process on the confirmation window. Okay, we go back up to the top of our list here. 
type in Oracle again and we see that it didn't find anything because we killed the Oracle process. Now go ahead and try to issue the select asterisk from name statement again. You get an error Aura 03113 end of file on communication channel because we took the database out from under SQL okay so the database basically crashed. So what we have to do is at the OS level we restart our Oracle database and this is a Windows specific here. So we're restarting the Oracle Service Finance in Windows. So you'll notice I'm not doing anything special, okay, as a DVA to restart the database in this. Now the database is certainly doing things special under the covers, and it may take a little longer to come up as usual because it needs to um, do extra work since the database basically crashed the last time it was up. It wasn't shut down gracefully last time. But even though the database is doing extra work under the covers, we just can we just start our service up in Windows connect via SQL plus and type in startup and our database is open. So go ahead and type in select asterisk from name. Now notice before that we had Bob and Bill in here. Okay. Notice that we don't have Bob and Bill anymore. We only have Minka and John. Okay. So Minka and John. Because why? Because we committed these transactions. We didn't commit these. Okay, we in, we had started the transaction that we never ended the transaction with a rollback um, or a or a uh, commit when the database crashed here. Okay, so or we killed it in our instance. Okay, so that proves right here that an Oracle database automatically ro rolls back any transaction which are currently in transactions which are currently in progress when an Oracle database crashes. So the next time the Oracle database starts up, it's going to um, roll back transactions which were currently in progress at the time that it crashed. Okay? And how could we have saved those two rolls, uh, rows? Well, we could have saved them by typing in commit. So it's always important to commit or to make sure it's in your application, your Java application code or whatever app, whatever language you're uh, writing in. Now if we go to our um, alert log which holds important information about our um, which holds a record of important events that occur in our Oracle database. Diag, RDBMS, Finance, Finance, Brace, Edit, Alert underscore Finance dot log. Okay, and we go all the way to the bottom here. We'll look at the start the messages of our last startup. Okay. And here's our last startup. Okay, so we're starting up all of our threads here. Okay, alter database mount. Successful mount. Database mounted. Okay, come down here. Here it is. It says beginning crash recovery of one threads. Parallel recovery started two processes. 97 redo log blocks red. 38 redo log blocks needed recovery. Start and redo application. Okay. Completed redo application. Completed completed crash recovery. Okay. So basically, what this is telling this right here are the messages you get saying that the Oracle database had to do these messages right here are saying that the Oracle database had to do some uh, crash recovery on the way up, and it found that what it needed in redo 02 log. Okay. So, remember I was talking about undo segments before? Well, undo segments are also logged in, in your redo log stream. So, they're also in redo02.log. Okay? So, when a database comes back up, it knows that before Bill and John, Bill, it, it realized that, hey, when this database crashed, someone was in the middle of a transaction. They were inserting Bill and Bob into this table. Okay? But I need to roll that back. Because I have to assume that any transaction that was running on a database crashed is crap. Excuse my language, but crap. Okay? So it looks in the redo02.log, which also has the undo segments, and it sees that um, what used to be in that table in those two rows were basically they were empty. So it applies that undo, which is two empty rows, which is why when we do a select asterisk when we come back up after a crash, we don't see our data. So that answers our question. 
So if you, you if you have a transaction that's currently in progress via ad hoc SQL using those commands, or your application's in the middle of updating data in your database, and your database were to crash, the next time the Oracle database comes up, it will automatically perform crash recovery, and part of that process is it will roll back. Okay, it will roll back it will roll back any um, transactions which are currently in progress. So when the Oracle database crashes, any transactions that's in progress will all that were that was in progress at the time of the crash will automatically be rolled back the next time the Oracle database is started. Okay, thank you.